leak code question 46 permutations given an array nums of distinct integers return all the possible permutations you can return the answer in any order constraints nums.length is always going to be greater than one or equal to one and less than or equal to six so as you can see like what this question is asking for is it's asking for of one two and three so we have six different permutations there with this question the solution will be using some form of recursion. And in this case, it will be using backtracking. Um, so in this question, we're going to need a temporary array. And we are also going to need result array. So what we'll do instead of putting results there is we will put results down at the bottom. Let's just make it a bit bigger. So the first step of the solution is to traverse through the nums arrays so we can visualize it because the best way to work out any permutations question is to visualize it with a tree. So if we choose one here and we carry out the recursive call on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to push one into our temporary array and what we have left is two and three. Now we can carry out the recursive call on two. So two is taken. So we push that into R again, one and two, and we're left with three. We take three, we push it into R. So R becomes one, two, and three. And then we're left with an empty array. Now, once we reach an empty array, so nums dot length is equal to zero. What we can do is we can push this array that we formed into res. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have one, two, three. Now what we need to do is the backtracking part because as you can see, we've only gone down one branch of this tree. So we need to find the other branches. So if we backtrack and we go back to this level, we check if there is another value in here, in which case there isn't. Then we backtrack again and we check this level to see if there is another value within the array. In this case we have three so we can recurse down this side so if we take three and what we're doing is we're adding to this value now one and three then what we do is we have two left we take two so r is now one three and two because we've pushed two into this array, and then we're left with an empty array. What do we do when we have an empty array when nums.length is equal to zero? We push that array into res. So one, three, and two. Now we backtrack, so we go up, we check this level, we check to see if there is another value in there. There isn't, we go back up to this level, we check to see if there's another value in there we haven't checked, there isn't. So we go back to nums up here and check if there's another value in here we have two, so we can go down this branch now. So we take two, we push it into R, then we're left with one and three. We take one, so R becomes two and one. Then we're left with three, then we take it, and push it into R, we have two, one, three and then we're left with an empty array. When we have an empty array, we push R into res, two, one, three, and then we backtrack. This is a long-winded process, but you need to see how it's formed. So we go back up to this level, check if there's another value in there, there isn't. We go back up to this level, check if there's another value, there is. So we recurse down this side. So we take three and we add it to this array because we've popped off at each stage. So R is equal to two, three then we're left with one one is taken and pushed into r so it'd be two three one left with an empty array push into res two three one time to backtrack backtrack check the levels is there an extra no check the levels we've covered all values in here go back to the last level there's one left to check and that's three so if we take three and pass it into r we're left with one, two. We take one, r is equal to three, one. Running out of space, we're left with two. We take two, 
so r equal to 3, 1, 2, and then we have an empty array, so we push into res, 3, 1, 2. Now we backtrack, check the levels, so we pop off of r, here we check there's no extra value, here we check we have 2, so we now need to traverse down this side, r is equal to 3 and 2, we're left with 1, we take 1, so r equals 3, 2, 1, and we're left with an empty array, so we can push that in here, so 3, 2, 1, then we backtrack, so we pop off r, check, pop off r, check, pop off r, check, and it is complete. So now what we need to do is we need to return res. Now we can talk about the time complexity of this algorithm. So we initially have to loop through this num array. So initially it's O of n, but with recursive calls, especially in this case, what we've got is we've got three different options. We've got one option here, another option here, and another option here. This goes to two options, then one, then none. So that's three to two to one. So that is factorial. So it'll be n times n factorial, where n is the values in the nums array. Now in terms of space complexity, what we're doing throughout this entire recursive call stack is we're allocating information into this array here. So again, it's going to be the same of O n times n factorial, where n is the number of integers within the R array. So let's code this out now. Okay, so first things first, we need to add a temporary array. Initialize that. And also we need to add the res array. So with any recursive call, we need a base case. So if nums length is equal to zero, so what we do is we push into res the array spread. And the reason we use the spread operator is to remove these brackets surrounding the numbers so that we don't have multiple array brackets. Okay, and then we need to loop through the items in nums. And as you can see in here, what we want is we want to take one away from nums. So we have the remainder. If we call this rest, what we're going to do is we're going to say nums.filter and we're going to take in n and index where index does not equal i. So the index will be at this position and i is here. So we want every value that does not equal that. So that'll be two and three. Okay, so once we've done that, we can push that value into r like we said we would in the example. And then we need to create the recursive call. So it'll be permute. We pass in rest because we don't want the entirety of the nums array. We just want the fraction of the array that we just calculated, r and res. And then this will carry out the recursive call until nums is empty. And then what we need to do to backtrack to find all the other possible permutations is just pop off of r. And finally, once all permutations have been found, we can return res. Let's give that a go. Okay, so that's been accepted. Let's submit it. And there you go. 